We've looked at a lot of automation features already with the different touch and latch modes and trim. And we've looked at controlling some aspects of automation, like with the auto match time in the preferences and the smoothing and the thinning. But it can be confusing when you're starting to automate and you have a lot of parameters automated. There's trim, there's latch, there's touch, there's all kinds of things going on. It's easy to make mistakes. And there are certain workflows that are available in Pro Tools to help control the behavior of automation. And I want to look at some of those in this video. Now we can set Pro Tools to exclude send levels from trim mode. And that's useful so that only the main volume goes into trim when a track is put into trim mode. So this gives you more flexibility in setting up send levels while trim mode is happening. So to do that, we go into the preferences and mixing. Here we have include sends in trim mode. So for example, a situation like this where I have send and volume automation, maybe I want to go into trim mode and trim some of the volume, but I don't want to have to think or worry about the sends, if they're going to get altered, if there's going to be trim applied to that and so on. So that's a good opportunity or situation where it's useful to have that disabled. Now, we also have automation follows edit, and we can get to that from under the options menu here, automation follows edit and or this button over here. And when it's this color, it's enabled. Now, when it's off, automation events are not going to be affected by edits when we edit the audio or MIDI clips. When it's on like this, automation events are going to follow and be affected by edits. So, for example, let's say I have this automation here for send and volume. I'm just going to switch this back to the regular waveform view and I'll hide that. Let's say I'm going to zoom a little bit over here and Maybe I want to copy this to a later section in my song. So I'm going to copy that. Maybe I'm repeating it just hypothetically. So now if I go back to the automation, you'll see it got copied with it. So you may or may not want automation to move with these kinds of edits. But the automation follows edit button or command is how you control that. Now I want to talk a little bit about automation safe. We have outputs and sends and plugins that can be placed in automation safe mode. And this will suspend automation recording for either the output or the send or the plugin. And the result is that selected automation is protected from being overwritten while you're automating other items in the track. Now, for example, here I've got send level and I've got volume and so on. So let's say I'm going to switch to the mixer. You can do this from either window, but it's a bit easier to see here. Let's say I'm going to click this little output fader. I can press this safe button and then I can avoid accidentally writing volume automation. Maybe I'm in touch mode, I'm editing some other parameter and I move this. It'll protect it from being written. Now, same thing with the sends. So I have this send level over here. I'm sending to reverb and maybe I'm going to click over there to reverb and I can put that in safe mode so I don't accidentally change the amount going to the reverb. And there's the fader for the send to the vocal delay, we can place any or all of these optionally in safe mode. And same thing with plugins, like for example, here's the reverb plugin I'm using. We have the safe button, and that way I can protect any of these parameters from being adjusted automatically. For example, maybe I'm working here and I'm in touch or latch and I'm doing things and I decide, you know, I want to make a little adjustment to the reverb. I'm just, it occurs to me at the moment. So I open the reverb plugin and I move a control around like that. I don't want that to be written. So I can put it in safe mode to prevent an accident like that from happening. And we can also suspend automation recording and playback session wide. And we do that from the automation window. You'll recall we can use command four to open it up or we get to it from window over here and automation. So all we need to do is just hit that suspend button and you'll see everything is grayed out. Here's a situation where it might be useful. Let's say you've got various tracks in different mode, you're in touch and trim and latch and you've recorded a bunch of automation and you're thinking, you know, maybe I don't like what I just did. I'm just going to suspend it all for a moment so I can hear everything without any automation. So you can globally turn it all on or off with that. And we can also suspend the writing of a specific type of automation on all tracks simply by clicking the button for that type of automation. So for example, if I click that, then I won't be able to write volume automation across any of the tracks. So for example, here I have volume displayed. I'm in touch mode and I'll just go over here and start playback and we'll see that no automation is going to be written. <laughs> So there I wiggled the fader and nothing got written. So we can do that for volume panning and muting or the send volume, send pan or send mutes.
Now we can suspend trim automation on all tracks, and this is unique to Pro Tools Studio version and Ultimate version, and that's great. What you need to do is just command click on Mac or control click the suspend button, and now that's gonna suspend only trim automation across all tracks, and see it turns a different color. Now we can also suspend automation for individual controls on a track. So for example, I've got this showing volume, so if I want to suspend writing and playback for that, I can simply command click and it's control click on Windows, the name here. So just that is now grayed out. So it won't write or read anything for that. Please, I want the whole pie. And you see it's not following any of the automation existing. I'll command click to enable it. Please, I want the whole pie. And now the automation's back. So again, great if you want to just temporarily suspend or bypass one parameter at a time. So I'll command click to bring that back. And if we want to suspend the writing and playback of automation for all the controls on a track, we just add shift to that. So it's command shift click on Mac and control shift click on Windows. And now it's going to suspend both of those. And yet the automation will still be available on other tracks. You see there, it's not grayed out and I'll command shift click. So it temporarily suspends it for all the controls on a track. And you can also suspend the writing and playback of automation for a specific control on all tracks. And to do that, we command option click on the Mac and control alt click on Windows. So let's say I want to hear this little arrangement without any volume automation that I have going on in any of the tracks. I'm going to command option click this and that's great out there. And you see it's great out here as well where volume is showing. So that's great to audition without a specific type of automation. And we can also suspend trim automation for individual controls on a track. And again, this is an ultimate and studio version feature. So let's create some trim automation to start with. Put that in trim mode and re-enable the automation for there. And also in my preferences, I want to show you one more thing about trim automation. I want to make sure that here the coalesce trim automation is on exiting trim mode. So I don't want it to get coalesced right away. So let's create a little bit of automation. <laughs> All right, so I hit stop and we see we have it there. Now, one other feature I wanted to show you is that under track, we have the ability here to clear trim automation so we can get rid of it if we want. So I can play it back now and we'll see and hear it. And let's change the playlist here so that we're viewing the trim automation. There it is. Please, I want the whole so you saw it moving there. Now we can suspend only the displayed trim control on a single track by command clicking or control clicking on Windows, the control name in the selector. So boom, now I've suspended that trim automation. Please, I want the whole pie. So if I switch this back to volume, we'll still see the regular automation happening. So let's take this out of trim mode and it'll coalesce. There it is. And if I go back to volume, we'll see it. Please. There it is. So that's how we can suspend trim automation for a single control on a single track. But if we want to suspend the display trim control on all tracks, we can do command option click and that's control alt click on Windows. So let's say I've done a pass with a bunch of trim automation. So I've got volume automation and it's sounding okay, but I want to do another pass and make some trim adjustments. I have that and I'm holding it. It hasn't been coalesced yet. What I can do is go to volume trim. You'll see it's still suspended there. I'm going to command click to bring it back. What I can do is command option click, and that'll suspend the trim automation for that parameter across all the tracks. So then I can temporarily audition my playback without the trim automation, see if I like it. And if I do, then I can coalesce it. If not, I can clear it. So there's a lot to digest, but there's some great functions here for controlling automation behavior. We'll continue with more in the next video.